So let's get started creating an app using the TD Ameritrade API. So when I first checked out the TD Ameritrade API, one of the drawbacks was it was a little bit uh, hard to get started with. It was specifically, it was a little hard to figure out how to handle the authentication flow. But once that's done, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, fortunately for us, I was browsing the subreddit Algo Trading uh, this past week, and a few days ago, this guy, Alex Golek, thanks to him, uh, it looks like while he was quarantined, his project was to create a wrapper around the TD Ameritrade API using Python. And so I thought I'd check out the library he just created and, and see if it works well, and it turns out it does, and it's perfect for the basis of this video, and it's going to make it very easy for us to get up and running with the TD Ameritrade API. So um, you'll see he did a post on what he did and provided a simple example. And if you click, you can see uh, he has a GitHub repository for it. And then also has official documentation that he created for it. Uh, so documentation included. And so uh, this is the GitHub repository at TDA API. It's by Alex Golick. And then uh, he also has some documentation here for the package. And so you can see it's actually very well documented and he covers um, all of the different API endpoints that are in the official API. Uh, so it's very well thought out, very well documented and very easy to use. And so uh, let's get started with using it. So uh, the first thing we'll do here um, is we're going to uh, install the required package. And so if you look the he installs uh, the package is TDA API, so it's installed with pip, or you can add it to requirements.txt here as usual. And so I'll do a new terminal, and we'll just do pip3 install TDA API, and this will install the Python package, right? And then what we'll also do is we'll create a new script called, uh, let's just call it trade.py, right? And then let's just get the example he provides and we'll just modify this as needed and talk about what it's doing. So I'll do that. So you copy this in and you see what TD Ameritrade requires is a, an API key. And so we'll have to sign up with TD Ameritrade first to get this API key. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go to developer.tdameritrade.com and I'm gonna click register. And so I've already done this. You just choose a username and password. And I assume if you're watching this video, you already have a TD Ameritrade account. So you just need to agree to their API documents documentation or API developer agreement. And then if you log in, and so I'll log into my account. That's me. And then if I log in, um, it'll log me into the developer portal. And then once you're logged in, you'll have APIs, guides. So that's the documentation. And then you have my apps. So I'm going to click my apps. And so to get an API token, you have to create an app first. So I'm going to create a new app and I'm going to call it uh, Algo Trader, right? And then you just give it a URL. Uh, and I think this works. We'll just do localhost for now, HTTPS colon slash s localhost. And so um, this callback URL, since we're developing locally, we can use localhost and uh, to show how, to, and as a purpose of the application, use the Ameritrade API. All right, so we just put some basic info here. It said create the app, and it's going to give us an API token. So I hit create app. So once your application is created, it'll give you an application name. And if you click on the name of your application, it's going to give you a consumer key. And that's like an API key that you'll use to authenticate. I'm going to edit this part of the video, but I'm going to click this, and I'm going to copy the consumer key to my clipboard. So now that we've created an application and we have a consumer key copied to our clipboard, we can go back to our code and we're going to uh, take these settings. I like to put these in a separate file. So I created a new file called config.py and I'm gonna move this, I'm gonna cut that there and I'm gonna move this into config.py and then your consumer key, you're gonna put it right here and you don't wanna delete this at and this stuff at the end here, you leave that there, otherwise it won't work. So uh, you copy your consumer key and I'm gonna do that and edit it out of the video. Um, and then token path, what's actually going to happen, it's going to authenticate against the, a the API uh, using this token, and then it's going to store another uh, piece of authentication information in a local file. And so you can just give it a path where you want to store this file. Um, and then I'm going to just call it token. And then after we run this, you'll see a file called token that's created. And that's so it doesn't have to authenticate again. We're going to go through this um, authentication flow. And then once we authenticate the first time, we'll have this local token that doesn't expire for like, I think it's like 90 days. So then you don't have to authenticate over and over again. You can just run all your trades. Okay. So you're just going to call that token and then um, you give it a redirect URI. URI. So it's HTTPS. And then we're just going to use local host right here. 
So I'll do local host right there. All right. All right, so now that we have our API key and our token file settings in a separate config file, we need to import that config file into our main program. So I'll just type import config, and then we'll just have this program use it. So it uh, looks like this is trying to authenticate from a token file. So um, I'm going to change this token path to just be config.tokenpath, because that's how it's defined in our config. And then we also have config.api key. So our API key is coming from our config file. And so it's going to try to authenticate from a token file. And so I'm going to run that and see what happens. So you can use the play button up here, or if you're using the command line, use python3 uh, trade.py. And I'm going to run it, and you see it gives us an error message, Chrome driver executable needs to be in path. And so what's actually happening here is it tries to authenticate from a token file, but I haven't authenticated before, so there's no token file. So it throws that file not found error. And so if there's no token file, it uses Selenium and this Chrome web driver to do this web-based uh, OAuth login flow to get a token so it can write the file. And so uh, we're getting this exception here, and it's telling us it can't find the Chrome driver. So how do we get it? You'll see it gives us this URL here, uh, sites.google.com Chrome driver. And so I'm going to click on that and open the link. And it gives us a place to download this Chrome driver. And so I'm going to click stable release. And I'm going to download, since I'm on Mac, I'm going to download this zip file here. And then I'm going to open that zip file. And you see I have this Chrome driver. And I'm just going to copy this, this Chrome driver over to the directory I'm working. So I'm going to put it in uh, TD Ameritrade and then paste that in. And then locally, you'll see I have this Chrome driver file. It looks like I've downloaded it a few times, so I need to rename it. I'm just going to call it Chrome driver. All right, so it's called Chrome driver. It's in the local directory, um, so it's ready to go. And then uh, this is going to look for it. So how does it know where to look for it? Um, you actually need a parameter here called executable path. So executable underscore path equals. And then I look at the current directory I'm in. So I'm going to type pwd. And I'm in users Larry projects TD Ameritrade. So I'm going to put that path in and also put Chrome driver at the end so it knows exactly where uh, this Chrome driver is. And then I'm going to run it, and it should find it. So I'm going to run again, trade.py. Chrome driver needs to be verified. Uh, so that's one more step. I promise this is almost done. Uh, so uh, Mac, I think, blocks it unless you allow it to run it from the command line. So I'm going to do system preferences. I'm going to go to security, privacy. And I need to allow Chrome driver to run. And let's see if this works now. All right, so it should allow me. And it's going to run. And it, see how it launches a browser real quick? It says API key not found. Uh, that's because I need to use config dot config dot and config dot token path. All right, we got these configs. I'm going to run it again. Uh, you'll see it try to launch a browser. And see, it wants me to authenticate against Ameritrade and prove I have an Ameritrade account. And so I need to complete the login flow. So I'll use my Ameritrade account and click login. And I'm going to say I allow uh, this program to uh, use, use it. All right. So it does the redirect, and it's done. And now you see uh, after this authenticated, uh, we have this command to see client uh, dot get price history for Apple. And look at that, we got a whole bunch of JSON data showing the price history for Apple stock at different dates and times. So you see it's actually working already. And you also see that we have a file called token on the disk here. And so with this file called token, that means we already have a persisted uh, authentication to um, the TD Ameritrade API. So if I run this again, you'll see it just runs and gets my price history. I don't have to re-authenticate. We've already given it permission to place the trades, right? Or to get anything uh, we need to. So uh, I'm gonna delete this part here and let's go ahead and just try another API method. Now that we're already authenticated, uh, let's see if we can uh, do something else with this library. So let's see what else we can do. Uh, let's click uh, current quotes. Let's just say we want to get a current quote for a given symbol. So we have this dot get quote and then you just give it a symbol. So let's try that. So we'll do a uh, response equals C dot get quote. And let's say I want to know about Boeing and I'll print the response. And okay, so we have a 200 response, but we actually just want the JSON. So it gives us a method called a JSON attach. And I'll do that. And you see we have our Boeing stock. We got asset type equity. Yeah, and we have a whole bunch of information about the last price. So 
Um, that's that's it for now. I just wanted to show you quickly how to get it set up using uh, Selenium and the Chrome web driver and how to use this new Python package that was just created in order to authenticate against TD Ameritrade API and show that you could run some of these methods. And one more thing, it looks like it imports uh, Selenium. So I don't know if I just already had that installed, but just in case, um, if you had a, any trouble with Selenium, you might need to install that as well. So I'll add that to requirements.txt as a package and I'll commit that to the repository. Um, so that's it for now. I just wanted to show you how to quickly get up and running with the TD Ameritrade API, show you how to use this new package that was just authored that made it really easy and show you how to call a method in order to get a stock quote. So um, the next couple of videos, I'm gonna show you how to do things like get options, option chains, and also how to place stock and option orders uh, with the TD Ameritrade API. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video.